G'day guys and welcome back to my Aussie Ocker workbench build. Today we're going to be installing the HNT Gordon front vise and the HNT Gordon tail vise. This is part 11, let's get into it. To start off with, we'll install this HNT Gordon tail vise. Now it's a really nice vise. This one has a 100 millimeter stroke. That means that dog goes backwards and forwards by 100 millimeters. And it does it quite effortlessly smoothly and quietly. I like it. Whoops. Now this vice here, this is an updated version of their original design. What they've done is on the bottom, they've actually milled out this slot all the way through there now. So it goes all the way through. So any, any dirt or shavings that get stuck down there, instead of getting stuck halfway and getting stuck at the bottom there, they can actually float all the way through there. And if I cut a slot all the way through my bench here, all the way to the ground, any shavings that go through, it'll go through here, through the bench and fall onto the ground beneath. So that's a really good design improvement over the original design, which was covered in at the bottom. And what you had to do there, you'd, you'd have to drill a little hole at the front here so that any shavings that got stuck in there will get pushed forwards as you move the dog forwards. They get pushed out the end and fall out the hole out the front. This is much better. So that's really good of them. Now, HNT Gordon, they supply a set of plans when they sell these tail vices. It tells me all of my critical dimensions that I need to do. What I need to do is I need to recess this into my bench and they've given me the dimensions. So they want me to cut my mortise here that I've already marked out, 32.3 millimetres wide. The physical item here is 32 millimetres wide. So they've given me about 0.3 clearance either side. So it will fit in there, but it won't jiggle around too much. The depth of this main mortise here is 42 millimetres. But the physical item is only 35 millimetres. So they want me to go 42 millimetres, so I've got 35, which leaves seven millimetres, which will be this cover plate that I'm gonna put on top to cover it up. So seven plus 35 is 42. Then the length of that mortise there, from the edge of your bench to the end of your mortise, is 290 millimetres. The physical item is only 280 millimetres. So they've got an extra 10 mil at the front, don't really know why, don't really care why. I'm gonna trust Mr. HNT because, well, it's his, his product. He knows what he's doing, so I'll just do it. So before I go too far, I just wanna get the tail vise check my fit, make sure it's fits without being too tight, without being too loose. As you can see, it is way too loose. That's okay, because this is, all of this material here is going to be removed when I put in the cover plate groove or recess later. So it's gonna be seven millimeters deep. This is currently our five millimeters deep. So it all gets removed. So I haven't actually ruined my workpiece here, but I have done a pretty bad job of setting that up. So I need to move my route a bit back towards the edge of my bench here to close up the gap a little bit. So that there is just, just a touch too tight. So now I need to open it up just a little bit, somewhere between half of these two shoulders there. I found that as I'm routing along, it's splintering all of this timber out here. So to prevent that from splitting out any further, 
I'll go ahead and make a series of bump cuts or in this case I'll simply plunge straight down along the cut edge in a series of locations oh, whoops <laughs> um, I'll simply plunge down in a series of, of locations about an inch apart that way when the timber wants to try to split it will only split up to the next bump cut or plunge cut that I've put into it and then it will simply stop splitting it's a clever technique to overcome routing against the grain like I'm doing right here. I didn't film this in slow-mo so I can't slow down the footage to make it clear but if you watch closely you'll see big chunks of timber fly out of the router area. One there and another one there. If, if I didn't bump cut it that would have split inside my, or outside my cut line, which ruins the workpiece. And then the proof is in the fit, hopefully it fits. Not bad, not bad. Something's stopping it at the bottom there. What's stopping it? Oh, there's that pin at the bottom there. So it can't actually go all the way down at the at this point in time. But so long as it gets in there, stunk as a bug in a rug. So that'll sit there like that some somewhere. I'll just check my overall depth right at the end here. Should be somewhere about seven. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. 7.01 not bad close enough but it wouldn't really matter if it said six millimeters or eight millimeters that would be good enough you couldn't make it too much because your cover plate is going to sit inside this section here between the dog there so if you, if you made it 20 millimeters for example well you your dog would have nothing left to bite into into the tail vice itself and if you made it too thin well it'll, it'll just cave in as soon as you accidentally put something too hard down on that surface and you'd end up cracking it so six seven eight millimeters sounds about right sounds pretty good i like it so now we need to route out a section around this here the seven millimeters deep and it doesn't really matter what size you do but hnt gordon once again have said 10 millimeters all around. So this was 32.3 plus 10 and plus 10 is 52.3. This was 290 across here. So 300 go through there. Sounds about right, looks about right. I'm happy with that, so I'll do that. I'll just go 10 mil, 10 mil that way, 10 mil this way, and 10 millimeters this way. That's nice and flush. That's nice and flush. That's all good. So what I'll do is I'll just use my router just to clear away some of this waste here. It gives me a nice perfect level playing field over these three shoulders here. And then I'll just clean up the corners. Good enough. So I'm going to make this slot slightly wider than what this is here. That way, when the shavings go down, it goes down and it keeps on going and I'm not creating a little ridge halfway down in the hole that it can still get caught on. It wouldn't be a problem. I could simply get my ruler and poke them through, but if they fall out by themselves, that would be better. And so if I remove any possibility of a ridge being down there, happy days. So I'll just do it in two passes. I'll just move it, sh shift it left and right by half a millimetres. All right, so now with this hole all the way through there, the shavings that go through the top can now pass all the way through and out the bottom. You can see my fingers wiggling, maybe. Now, to stop this vise from sliding backwards during use as we increase the clamping pressure between these dogs on the vise and the, the bench, 
that's going to want to push it backwards. We need to stop that. So what HNT have done is put a little dog, little pin in the bottom edge there. And that will, what we'll do, we will drill a hole right about here somewhere so that that little pin slots inside there and goes click. And that will stop it from being able to slide backwards. So we'll flush that up with the, the back here. Get ourselves a little hammer, tap. And from there, that gives me a little divot point to drill my hole. Now, you've got a few choices. You could drill it, you could try to drill it exactly perfect. If you drilled it too far backwards, you'd end up with a step out the back. If you drilled it too far forward, it would be sunken into the end a little bit. Now I'm gonna send it a little bit forwards because I can always move it backwards by removing more material if I need to, which I hope that I don't have to. So it's in there, but it's a little bit too far forward. You can see that I've got a step right here, quite a significant step as well. So I need to move that hole backwards a little bit, which is what I've allowed for. But I also need to clean up this end anyway. I still need to shave it down and sand it and whatnot. So instead of doing that right now, because it functions perfectly fine the way that that is, I'll sand this down smooth first, and then I'll shift that hole backwards a little bit so it finishes flush in the final sanded piece that's up there now I've got it marked out I need to router this waste out here so that the hole goes through here through there and out the bottom of the bench so that the dog can slip in through the top there I'll do that after I've got this mounted in place because at the moment this is a pretty flimsy bit of timber it's very hard to hold this in place while making a pretty significant route through the middle so I'll screw through here, here and here and screw them down using some little brass screws that have a domed head on there. All right, so now I can route out this waste and I must remember before I actually route it out to take the tail vise out of there, otherwise I'm gonna route straight through it. <laughs> when this slides in, we have, that's nice and flush there. And oh, to the best of my eye, that's nice and flush at the back there, so that's basically a perfect straight slot straight down. And the proof is in the pudding if I can get this thing in here. Aha, uh -huh. the slot's not actually wide enough to take the shank of the dog. So the shank of the dog is half inch. My slot is half inch, so I actually need to wind the router this way a little bit, take a pass, wind the router that way a little bit, take a pass so that this can actually go through which funnily enough, that's exactly what HNT Gordon's instruction says. It says make it 14 millimeters, whereas half inch is only 12.7 millimeters wide. I tried the fudge it and well, it didn't work. <laughs> Thirteen point six two. All right, and now with opening this slot up, this should just fit in there nicely, and it does. Drop into that hole, jolly good. Nice. And now with this tail vise installed, as far as I'm gonna take it into this video, I still need to put a little chamfer around this slot around the top there, flush off the back, but that's, that's all nothing work. I want to install this face vise. Now, the face vise, the way that I consider it, is that I consider it a bit like a, a baseball player's catcher's mitt. So the face vise will be over here on the other side of the leg here. I'll put a board up against the side of my bench there and it'll catch this end of it. It'll, it'll catch it like a baseball. And then there'll be a couple of dogs underneath to stop this from falling down. 
And while that's supported up there, I can get my hand plane and push along with it being held in position, not shooting forward by the catcher's mitt. So I'm going to mount this vise pretty much directly below where it is right now on that side of the leg there. So to mount this vise, there's a mounting plate here which bolts directly to the underside of the top here. And then I've got my leg here. The legs are on an angle slightly. So this here is not 90 degrees. So when I put this up here and slide it across, that'll be hard up against this leg. Now I don't want it hard up against the leg. I want it close to the leg, but not right on top of it because it will just make it difficult to put the tops back back on with the vise on. So I actually want to move it away from the leg just a little bit, like five millimeters or so. So what I'll do, I'll put it up under there, press it up tight. It's hard up against the leg at the moment. I'll just make a mark here. So first things first, I've just marked this line, which indicates the this side of the mounting plate while everything's hard up against the leg. Now I want to move it over away from the leg by five millimeters, just so that when I have to put this back on, I'm not fighting the tenons on top of the legs with the mounting plate on top here. And now that I've got two lines, I'm gonna get rid of one, so I'm not gonna, now I can't get confused. So now we know which way we're going to mount this this way, we need to figure out where we're going to put this mounting plate. Now, I could mount this all the way back here, but what that does, it actually effectively reduces my travel of the vise to not very much at all. So I want this to be as close to the front as possible without being too far forward, because the side of my bench is the back jaw of my vise. And if this was to protrude past the side of my bench, it, it effectively well, it ruins the vise, to be honest. So this needs to be behind the edge, but not so far back that it restricts all of our travel. So what HNT Gordon have done is supplied me with a small shim of timber, looks like Gigi or something like that. And that will fit in behind or in between the, the jaw and the mounting plate. Oh. I just wanna make sure that it's pushed below the mounting plate. So now that's given me a one millimeter offset here. So that when I flip this over and push the jaw all the way back to the edge of my bench, the mounting plate is actually set one millimeters back from the front edge of the jaw, or yeah, from the front edge of the jaw or the front edge of the bench there. To give an extreme example, if I was to get a thicker bit of timber, clamp it between the two points there, flip him over. When I push the, the jaw of the vise into the front edge of my bench there, the mounting plate has shifted well and truly back from the front edge, but I've also lost all of that vise travel just through stupidity. So I'll use this little packer. I don't need much space. I just need a little bit of space. So now I'm gonna have this mounting plate set back one millimeter from that back edge. When I flip him over, put it hard up against that edge there. So then if I put this in my position left and right, using the pencil line that I've marked, I can drill in a couple of holes, put in a couple of bolts and it's done. And then with everything clamped in position, it can't move. It's not clamped super tightly. I haven't really cranked down on that, but it's, it's not gonna move. It's flush against this front jaw or the back jaw, which is the side of my bench. It's in position left and right. So now, using a drill appropriately sized to my coach bolts that I'll be using to mount this, I just wanna get the hole started because I won't be able to drill all the way through with this vise in the way. So I can, I can just get the hole started, I can find the location, and then I will. So now I can take all of this out of my way and finish the holes. And I've marked a little bit of sticky tape to mark how deep I want to go, because I don't want to go too deep. That would be terrible. Yep, 
and then using a ratchet and these bolts I can tighten these down. I don't want to tighten them too far at the moment, just snug them up. Then I'm pretty sure I can take out this packer, wind it back in, and that's no good, I've stuffed something up. Uh, the holes are too far forward, bugger. So what I've done, I've got these holes, they're a little bit too close to the edge, and so what's happening is, when I put the bolt in there and tighten it up, it's actually shifting that plate forwards a little bit, and it's ending up it's ending up with that plate, instead of being slightly behind that front edge, it's very, very slightly in front of that front edge. There's a slight lip there. So what I need to do, I need to fill in those holes and try again with a little bit, a little bit more common sense next time. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll put those holes towards the back of the hole this time so that when the bolt goes through, it's actually gonna wanna pull that backwards just that little bit. All right, so it's been a few hours and the glue should be dry. So I'm just going to remove the top heads of these dowels and we'll try this again, except I'll make a slight change this time. So the change that I'll make, instead of using this thin packer that was supplied by HNT Gordon, which I've actually measured it now, it's only 0.67 of a millimeter. Basically, it's a standard piece of solid timber veneer. Instead, I'll get my two little rulers here, which are 0.7 each, and I'll put them down inside here, and that'll give me an offset of 1.4 millimeters. Because that was the problem last time. I'd, I've drilled out my holes a little bit too close to the front. And then when I've tightened it all up, it's shifted it forward just that little bit. Now it only ended the the mounting plate ended up in front of this side of my bench by only about 0.1 of a millimeter. So if I've got a little bit further, more of an offset backwards to begin with, if it pulls forward that little bit again, well at least it has to pull forward a lot more this time in order to become a problem because it was so close to being good the first time, but it wasn't perfect. All right, let's drill it out. But this time I'm gonna drill bias into the back of these holes rather than trying to aim for the middle. Now you can see how far back I am in the second set of holes, quite a distance in fact. I'm well and truly biased to the back here. And this time I'll even use washers on the bolts, which is what I should have done last time. I just don't use bolts very often. All right, so now you can see that this mounting plate is set slightly back from the front edge of my bench here. Now, if I just give it a little tweak, not a lot, just enough, that will square up it perfectly to this back edge here. So it's nice and tight there, it's nice and tight there. We know that this is perfectly square. So then we can drill out these back holes. Once again, I'm gonna bias to the back so that it doesn't push this forward and ruin my day again. Now, one thing that I'm thinking about here is these holes here, they're 10 millimeters in diameter and these bolts are M10 bolts. So that shank there is just slightly less than 10 millimeters. So it does fit in there, but there's not a lot of wiggle room in there. So if I was to drill, or if I was to try to drill these holes dead center, and I get one slightly forward and one slightly backwards, that will actually, when these bolts go through and it ends up on this bolt section here, that will actually want to twist it this way or that way. So in order to remove that chance, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to bias towards the back a little bit. And to do that, this is a seven millimeter drill bit, which matches the, sh the minor diameter of, of the threads here. So when I do it, I'm just going to put this in the middle, in the middle of the hole this way. So right about here somewhere. And I'll put the drill bit hard up against the back edge there. And that way I can do the same thing over on the other side and it gives me consistency left and right. So I don't have one slightly forward and one slightly back. They're both slightly back. And when this closes up, it should close up square to the face here. Looks good, looks good. Oh, it looks fantastic. All right, so there's two extra bolts here that I could put an extra couple of bolts in there if I wanted to. I don't really think that's gonna be necessary. Four would be good enough. It's not going anywhere. Rock solid, good as gold. I love it, it's real nice. I hope this stops all by itself. Yeah, so it does stop. And that gives me from the bench to, yeah, it's exactly 149.5. What about this side? 149.5. So it's very, very parallel to this bench, even when it's all the way out there. I like it. So this is just some 19 millimeter dowel that I've sanded down a little bit so that it fits into the holes because the other end that I haven't sanded fits, but it fits as a joinery fit. This just fits in there nice and loose. So I can select which hole I want to go for. That one will do. Tighten up the tail vise. Not going anywhere. Oh, that blade should, could use a sharpen, but it's working. It's working well. I like it. So that's my tail vise. Beautiful. And then to plane longer edges for when I'm edge jointing boards, I can put it in here into my catcher's mitt, into my vise, and it will drop down there, right? So if I just put a couple of dogs, one in there, one in there, I can put the board on top of those dogs and slide it across and it didn't crash into the vise because I made sure the dogs were slightly higher than the barrel of the vise. So there's a little bit of a gap right there so it doesn't actually come through and crash into the side of it like that. It simply slides over the top and I can clamp it down. And you'll see it's pulled nice and tight all the way along there. And if I go half, beautiful. And it's not going anywhere, like that's, that's basically just a little flick and it's rock solid. Flick, rock solid. It's nice. It's nice being able to walk alongside the plane 
as I'm going. That way I'm powering from my legs rather than having to do it like I have been doing it like this. Ugh, that sucked. Nice, I like it, I like it a lot. It's actually really good, like the whole system is working really nicely. The bench has enough weight to it and it's rock solid, so it's not vibrating, it's not racking. So it's not bouncing my plane along as I'm moving. Oops, what happened there? Yeah, this plane is cactus, I need to sharpen that. But yeah, it's good. It's not slipping in the vise, it's not moving up and down. Well, I can move it up and down with that much leverage on it, but I also don't have it done up that tight. And that's the good thing about these vices here. It's only got a very short handle. That's by design. So firstly, it doesn't, doesn't raise up high, high enough to get in the way if it ended up vertical when it was tight. But it also limits the amount of pressure that you can put onto it. So me being pretty ham-fisted, I generally <laughs> like to tighten things down too tight. This actually limits my ability to do that without giving me a massive mechanical advantage. So that's good, I like it. Anyway, so this rounds out the last of the construction videos on this bench. There's still a lot of work to be done on this, like I just need to smooth out any of these sharp edges, make some better dogs, attach the tops to the frame with a couple of bolts, just a couple of bolts straight from beneath, pulling everything down, um, smooth out these ends, a bit of a chamfer over the top, and then I'm still undecided as whether I'm going to paint the top brown or whether I'm going to stain it black. I don't know. But the next video will cover all of that. It's going to be a full compilation build video for the next video, done to a bit of music. So if you're interested in seeing that, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when that happens. That'll be in about three weeks from the published date of this video. And yeah, so thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much if you just spent a few hours watching this entire series. Hopefully you think this bench is pretty good. I think it's pretty good, but my opinion's not worth anything around here. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Hmm, I like it. <laughs> nice. I swear none of my blades are sharp. <laughs> <laughs>